Hello everyone, how's it going today? My name is Muhammad Ali, CEO of Core Gems, and I think I have a very, very interesting video for you guys here today. The topic we're going to be discussing is not um, whether Ruby is better than Sapphire or whether uh, you should go for Ruby rather than a Sapphire or anything of that nature. All we will be discussing is the definition, similarities, and differences between Ruby and Sapphire. Now, a lot of the times, there's a great deal of confusion between the line between a ruby and a sapphire. And that's because they're actually the exact same stone. Uh, both ruby and sapphire are corundum. All ruby is corundum, all sapphire is corundum. They're the same exact mineral. It's just the impurities in the stone that yield a different color. And based on that color, um, the stone is defined as either a ruby or a sapphire. So let's take a look at some of the key differences and similarities between Sapphire and some of the key characteristics. So biggest, biggest thing here, Ruby's main color must be red, must be red. The main color must be red. That means it can be, you know, pinkish red. It can be purplish red. It can be orangey red. As long as the main, main color is red. If it's reddish orange, it's a sapphire. If it's reddish pink, it's a sapphire. If it's reddish purple, you get the idea, right? As long as the main color is red and it's a corundum, then the stone is a ruby. The second, so that is the you know defining characteristic. That is the definition of a ruby, a red corundum. Um, the biggest key difference in terms of, you know, buying gemstones as you know as pretty much all of us are collectors including myself even though i sell gemstones so much i collect them as well and the key things you know we want to look at and we want to take into account is uh price price is very 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 important gems are very expensive things you know something the size of my thumb a ruby the size of my thumb can be worth 30 million dollars so and a sapphire the size of my thumbnail would definitely not be worth 30 million dollars very very unlikely all things being equal, say similar clarity levels, similar cut, similar carat weight, Ruby is much rarer and much more expensive than Sapphire on average, all things being equal. That being said, there are certain um, Sapphire colors such as Pad Prasha and Royal Blue and uh, certain origins, Cashmere, that will rival almost any Ruby. However, the most expensive non-diamond gemstone is Burmese Ruby. So keep that in mind. At the end, we'll be coming back here and we'll be having a little challenge and we'll see if you guys can pick out the ruby and the sapphires in the bunch. All right, let's look at uh, key item three. Ruby is generally much more included than sapphire. Um, you know, the same impurities that cause the coloration and the same growing conditions that cause the coloration uh, result in, on average, the stones being much more included, rubies being much more included than sapphire. Uh, internally flawless sapphire, rare but not unheard of. Internally flawless ruby, it, it's almost unheard of. And when I say internally flawless, I mean loop clean. There's there's no gemstone that you know at ten uh, that like at a hundred x magnification is loop clean. It's not a natural stone. Ten x magnification loop clean ruby, extremely rare, extremely valuable, extremely uncommon. So uh, we'll, we'll be coming back to these three and uh, uh, we'll have a little challenge to see if you can pick out the ruby and the sapphires in the bunch. And uh, there's only one way to know for sure. I'm going to come back to that. Let's do the challenge first. So as I mentioned, the main color has to be red. Now you cannot determine this um, simply by looking at it on a white background or one sort of lighting condition. You need to look at it under a few different lighting conditions and, you know, look at pictures online, look at a variety of different resources and really gauge and, you know, determine, is that main color red? There's a lot of debate as to whether a pink stone is a ruby. A lot of, a lot of gemologists actually do argue that. They say that if, uh, if it's pink, it's ruby. And historically, that is actually how it tended to go. Um, however, recently, you know, as we've, as gem, as gemology has become, you know, really more of a exact science and we've come up with exact definitions and exact criteria uh very very few people consider uh, a pink a pink 
corundum stone to be ruby. However, uh, it I'll come I'll come back. It, it relates to uh, the answer to part four, so I don't want to spoil it yet. But I think a lot of you already know the answer to that one. So uh, I'm just going to bring these three stones over to the black background so you guys can see the difference. And uh, I think that brings out a lot more of the main color of the stone. And frankly, a lot more of the glow of the stone. Um, one of the stones still looks completely red. Two of the stones look pinky, purplish, orangey red. I mean, so again, on average, yes, ruby is much more expensive. But a top, top grade sapphire will be worth more than a medium to low quality ruby. However, now let's get back to the challenge. So three stones here. Um, have at it. Take a take a minute. Pause the video. I'll uh, I'll uh, zoom in on each one individually, and then um, give you guys a chance to guess. I think uh, I think I don't think this is a super hard challenge. Obviously, I think it's pretty clear which is which. I think one might throw you guys for a loop. We'll see about that. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm curious to see how many people get this. So we'll zoom in on this stone here. So it looks like uh, main color is red or maybe purple or maybe pink. Has a orange in it too. Usually when it has so many different colors, uh, Jamal just might be hesitant unless the main color is definitely red. Um, so, you know, keep that in mind. Not saying anything yet. <laughs> then we'll take a look at this one. This is my personal favorite. It is super, super perfectly cut. Brightest material. Lovely color, absolutely no dark tones, just a gorgeous gem. One of my favorite stones in my, this is my private collection. Uh, I have it listed for five grand. Obviously it's not worth five grand. It's because I don't want to sell it. And um, yeah, it's mine. <laughs> I love this stone a lot. Um, I'm not going to say whether it's ruby or sapphire just yet. Uh, if you've been on um, corgems.com or our gem rock auction store, you probably have already seen this stone. It's a very, very famous, very beautiful stone. So uh, please don't spoil it for anyone in the comments. Um, if you need to spoil, you know, put like a spoilers and uh, then go for it. But um, as you can see, the main color here is not red. It is definitely pink or purple. Pretty much an even mix, 50-50, pink and purple. In that case, right away, we can eliminate it from being a ruby. The main characteristic of ruby is that it must be red or at least mostly red at least 50 percent red i think this one's very obviously ruby uh it's actually not even just red it's vivid pigeon's blood red this is a top of the line absolutely perfect burmese stone um and again as mentioned you can see the inclusions in there huge big black mark if that was in one of those two if, if that was in the sapphire over there um we didn't determine the third one yet if that was in the sapphire over there, uh, it, it wouldn't be worth very much. It would it would almost destroy the value. But this is still a three thirty five hundred to four thousand dollars a carat, six seven thousand retail. It's a vivid pigeon's blood red Burmese ruby. That trumps pretty much anything else. It's a top of the line stone. Simply based on the origin, the fact that it's ruby, the fact that it's unheated, and the fact that it's vivid pigeon blood red. The inclusion is kind of secondary. Um, chances are the person who purchases it may well have it recut. They'll end up with probably like a 0.75, but like you can't beat this color. It's, it's literally one of the best rubies I've seen in my life in terms of color alone. It is absolutely perfect. No pink, no purple, no orange, pure red. Pure, pure, pure red. You guys see it on the white, that's when you get the most red and it is just pure red it's vivid pigeon blood red so i think it's very obviously is a ruby we've determined that and this one it's gorgeous stone my favorite is very obviously a sapphire we've determined that because again main color is pink slash purple it is not red even though there is a little bit of red in there it is not a mostly red stone this one Definitely a red stone. Um, one thing I should have probably mentioned right at the start is all three of these are natural, untreated corundum. Finally, we'll come to this stone. This one is definitely the most borderline. Um, it could have really gone either way. This is, 
I mean, it's very, very rare that, you know, top gemological labs such as, say, GRS and GIA will ever disagree. But it's stones like this that they will disagree on. Uh, it'll have to be, you know, something that's very, very borderline. But when you look at the stone, first glance, white background, the main color is indeed red. So it is a ruby. And I think pretty much um, any of the major labs out there would give it ruby. Now, where we run into trouble is some of the smaller labs. Um, for the most part, the smaller labs are reliable in terms of, you know, determining whether stone is treated or not, um, whether it's heat. You really can't rely on them to, you know, di differentiate between levels of heat treatment. Say, for example, you know, differentiating between heat and beryllium, which type of chemicals they might just say uh, residues have been found, but they may not be able to identify specific um, uh, chemicals that were used in the heating process, that sort of thing. But in terms of determining, you know, natural tourmaline, natural spinel, they're fairly accurate because those are fairly standardized gemological tests. Anybody, any GIA graduate can, you know, with a few thousand dollars worth of equipment determine for sure. When it comes to um, differentiating between a pink sapphire and a ruby, I wouldn't put my money on those smaller labs. They'll definitely be able to identify whether it's a natural corundum or not. But when it comes to um, for sure saying this is a ruby, you don't want to rely on a smaller lab. You want to go for something uh, much bigger because ruby is the most expensive color stone in the world other than fancy color diamond. That's it. That's it. That, those, that is the only stone that can um, that is higher per carat than ruby. Uh, ruby is broken every specifically vivid red pigeon's blood red burmese ruby has broken every other record for a price per carat for any gemstone ever sold so um of course there's a if uh, if you know if um a seller can make a pink or purple stone passes a ruby with a report they can make a lot of money because it's worth much much more again that doesn't necessarily mean it is actually worth more it just means it's in the category that is worth more. Now, as mentioned, I said there's one way that you can know 100,000% for sure, unequivocally, no shadow of a doubt, and that is by sending it to a reputable laboratory. So I've got three reports here. Uh, two are from CGL GRS, and one is from GRS. So GRS, Gem Research Switch Lab, Huge laboratory based out of Switzerland. They've got offices in Bangkok. They've got uh, offices in New York. They've, they have offices uh, all around the world. Every major gem hub, they've got um, offices. CGL GRS, not as well known. It's a Canadian based laboratory. Um, but the reason I trust them and a lot of other uh, buyers and sellers trust them is that they are partnered with GRS. Even in, It's even in their name, CGL GRS, Swiss Canadian Gem Lab. And uh, because of that partnership, you can basically say that, you know, 99.9999% certainty, any um, any uh, identification that uh, CGL GRS will give you, uh, GRS will give you the same. And the reason GRS is, you know, totally okay partnering is because they know for top stones, uh, people wouldn't send it to CGL GRS because... Uh, CGL GRS can only do limited origins. They can't test all types of stones. Uh, there's quite a few uh, factors in there that make sure that their core business stays intact. And um, we'll come back to that. So this is definitely the one that I felt um, was closest, was most borderline between Ruby and Sapphire. I felt like the other two were very obviously either Sapphire or either Ruby. Um, when I sent it in, I didn't know whether it would come back Ruby or Sapphire. I, I, I felt Ruby about, you know, 60, 70%, but indeed it did come back Ruby because again, main color was red. Um, again, all three of these stones are untreated and yeah, uh, it did come back as Ruby. And it's actually a Kenyan origin, which is super uncommon. It's super rare. That one's actually already sold. Um, this one, again, I don't want to sell as part of my private collection and the Ruby I will be selling on Katowiki. So we'll see how that goes. As for um the my favorite stone the beautiful trillion stone it is right there and it is a sapphire 
and most likely it would come in the pink or pinkish purple range, which is good enough. Now, one one test that um, people recommend and people uh, mention but really isn't actually reliable is the UV light test. And the reason UV light test is not reliable at all is because sapphire will definitely give you um, UV, as you can see here. Medium red, weak red, even though it's definitely sapphire, it's not ruby. The main color under visible light has to be red, not under UV light. Now let's finally let's take a look at this one, natural ruby. Vivid, G vivid red, GRS type, pigeon's blood, Burma origin. Uh, just to give you guys a rough idea of value, this stone right here is worth the least. And the reason is, it's color isn't very strongly saturated. It's uh, color zoned, which means certain areas have um, different color and stronger color than other areas, with some areas having very weak color. It's cutting is poor, and it's included. Um, fair market retail, you'd be looking at about $800. Uh, I sold that at a no reserve auction, only sold for about $150 or so. Uh, because again, it's not really a top of the line stone. It was in the lot, of a sapphire, which included this beautiful sapphire. So, uh, you know, a ruby in the mix, not bad. This stone is worth thousands of dollars. Even though it's a small 0.6 carat stone, its color is perfect, its cutting is perfect, it's fairly clean, and it is just jaw-droppingly beautiful. It is super brilliant, super bright, very intense color, uh, very rare Kenyan origin, and it's beautiful. So um, I would say at least, at least $4,000 in a retail environment, uh, wholesale, maybe only about 2,500 bucks, but um, I would never, I, I don't plan on selling it. It's, it's one of my personal favorite stones. Again, I'm a collector as well as a seller, so uh, that, that just staying with me. Then uh, finally, what comes to the Ruby, uh, again, retail, four to $5,000 any day of the week, um, wholesale, uh, about two grand minimum uh, because you do have that vivid pigeons blood red again the winner uh, if I, I'm, I'm again wholesaling it on Katawiki chances are the winner is going to recut it get rid of that inclusion it'll go down to 0.75 stone but other than that one inclusion it's actually a loop clean stone it is uh, super clean other than that one inclusion and of course color is best of the best vivid pigeons blood red so uh, I definitely think uh Stone has a lot of potential, but just keep in mind, just because it's um, uh, ruby and is in the category of ruby doesn't necessarily mean it's more expensive, but for what it is, it's more expensive. If this ruby was as clean as this sapphire and had, uh, color is as good, so I can't say anything about the color, but was as clean and as well cut, it'd be worth 10 grand, really easily. So uh, keep that in mind. Uh, overall, hope you guys, um, just to sum it up, main color has to be red. The only way to know for sure is to send it to a laboratory and not a smaller laboratory because uh, smaller labs want their uh, want, want sellers to come back over and over again. So they'll be a bit more generous giving that Ruby designation because, of course, Ruby's worth, on average, a lot more money. Um, hope you guys enjoy the video, learn something. Uh, and if you have any questions, you know, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, Email us, customer.service at coregems.com. We usually respond within 12 hours. We have a dedicated team of customer service specialists waiting to help you. Uh, customers are everything to us. So uh, we make these videos just to inform people, just to uh, give people an idea of what uh, gemological information is out there and the importance of gemological laboratory reports. I mean, if you're investing four or five grand into a stone, don't leave it up to chance. You don't know for sure if it's a ruby or not. You know, I was I was confused here, you know. This stone, I wasn't sure whether it's a ruby or sapphire. It made a pretty big difference in the value, even though it's not the top quality stone. It makes a huge difference in value. Uh, obviously, you know, you wouldn't really be confused with these two. But say you were, the only way to know for sure is to send it to a reputable laboratory. GRS, GIA, ADL, Gublin, SSEF, Lotus, Definitely want a top lab when it comes to Ruby versus Sapphire because Ruby is very expensive, very valuable, and can either make or break you. Uh, again, 
Thank you so much for watching. If you guys have any questions, feel free to ask away. And I hope you guys enjoy the video. Please like, comment, and subscribe for more of the best in gemological news and information. We'll be having a lot more videos like this coming out. Um, give me your feedback on this video style. If you enjoyed this sort of uh, uh, laid back informational video style or you want something a bit more different, you want something a bit more technical, let me know. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about the customer. So customer's always right. However you guys feel, that's what we'll do. Once again, this is Muhammad Ali, CEO of Core Gems, and thank you.